We're joined next by rock band royalty. Imagine Dragons has crushed music records since emerging in 2009. They're the only band to earn four diamond singles from the Recording Industry Association of America, and 10 of their songs have been streamed more than a billion times. Now they're celebrating the release of their new single, Nice to Meet You. Here's a taste. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. That track joins eight others on their much-anticipated sixth studio album, Loom. And to tell us all about it, Imagine Dragons lead vocalist Dan Reynolds, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's start out with this new album. If we can show the album cover, I want to get a sense of, of what's looming. And is that yes. a sunrise, a new day for Imagine Dragons, or is the, the sun setting? I'm really glad you noticed that. Uh, it, it's supposed to be up to the viewer's discretion. Ooh. Sunrise, sunset, end of something, beginning of something. Uh, the album really dives into kind of those concepts, so we felt like that was the right idea. And it's also very summer-esque. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you've said that this album is heavy and playful at the same time. How so? Uh, you know, I'm a pretty uh, up-and-down person, very bipolar, high-high, low-low. Mm. So I think just by the nature of that, you know, I would come into the studio some days and be in a great place and write a really summery, happy song. And some days, you know, kind of the opposite spectrum. I don't really sit here okay. as much. I wish I did. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't really. Are you going for the same vibe as far as what you'd like viewers to take away from the sound as you are with the visual that, that they'll, that it's kind of up for them, up for grabs, what they take away from it? Yeah, that's always my goal. Um, I really never try to write a song want, like having any expectation. Mm -hmm. I want people to hear what they need from it. Uh, two people can hear a song and take away completely different things. Oftentimes they'll hear the wrong lyrics and they'll hear the lyrics mm -hmm. that they wanted to hear. I'll have so many people come up and be like, man, for five years, like they thought the lyrics were this and they're not. And I won't correct them because I'm like, yeah, that's what it needs to be for uh, okay, you. for you. Those yes. incorrect lyrics, you know. You all took a break uh, last year. Rarely is something yeah. that you do, but you went back to the studio and now kind of have a, a new sound. What would you say influenced that new sound? You know, on our last record, we worked with Rick Rubin uh, as a producer, and he was incredibly hands-on, uh, and I love Rick, and we didn't work with him on this record. Uh, we worked with a different producer, so that alone kind of changes things, right? You have someone else in the, in the room who's kind of helping you navigate. I always write my own melody and lyrics, but a producer can really do a lot with the band as far as kind of tempering you. Um, so I think, you know, and we wrote it at a time period where I just, a lot had changed in my life. So thus kind of looming, the name of the mm -hmm. album, Loom, uh, what's to come? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, it's a little bit of both, I think. Yeah. In 2017, you created a, a festival called Love Loud. Yeah. Uh, tell us why you created it and what it's about. Uh, I grew up in a really, uh, religious home. I was Mormon. Um, and one thing that I saw from a very young age is, with Orthodox religion, it really is a difficult place for uh, a gay kid to grow up. I had a lot of friends who were uh, in the LGBTQ community and were also Mormon, and that was a really divided place for them to be and really unhealthy. Uh, so I ended up uh, starting a festival with one of my dear friends, Tyler Glenn, who's the singer of Neon Trees, uh, who's out and proud, uh, but didn't come out till much later in his life. Uh, he was Mormon as well. And so we decided to start a festival to raise funds for uh, other LGBTQ charities that do life-saving work like the Trevor Project uh, and also put on a festival in Utah for Mormons to gather and talk about, hey, uh, something needs to change. Uh, the suicide rate amongst, L amongst LGBTQ youth in Utah primarily uh, uh, is very high, seven times more likely to take their life when not accepted in their home or community. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a problem there and, and we've been trying to, to do our part to, to help. And you really do take pride in really creating this safe space for those in the LGBTQ plus community. How would you like to see, ideally, this evolve in the, in the next few years? You know, we've started to, it's not just Utah that, that has Orthodox faith and, and LGBTQ kids and that them being at odds. Uh, there's a lot of places in the U.S. that need help. Uh, so we started to branch out. Uh, we, we just started playing in Texas, uh, putting on a festival there. We just played last night in New York, um, D.C., uh, so we're, we're starting to branch out a little bit, um, but we wanted to make sure that we were actually making a difference in Utah when we started years back. And uh, it's been a, a, an incredible experience.
Dan, so appreciate you coming by to tell us what's looming. And uh, we want to let our viewers know that you can listen to the new album, Loom, out June 28th. And their biggest North American tour to date kicks off on June 30th.